Okay, so when we start taking this self-compassion into the classroom, the first thing I want to focus on is modeling these pro-social actions for our students in the classroom. So some ways you can do this are by building empathy in your classroom, and this can start off at the beginning of the year as really building that classroom community, that family that you have together, and focusing on having empathy for others. So some students who might not get to see this at home, this is something that you want to model for them in the classroom. You want to teach self-compassion directly. What does this look like? What does it sound like? What are the actions you have to take to practice self-compassion with your students? You want to model caring acts for your students. And then hopefully this can carry over into what they do with their peers. And I see this all the time with my students is maybe a student's having a really hard day. So I go and sit down and I talk to them, but then I'll watch them at recess. I'll, ha I'll have another student come over and to that student I talk to. And they're like, hey, are you doing okay? I really want to check in with you and, and their little second grader minds, which is really sweet to see. But that's an example of how you would model that for students and they would eventually take it over and do those pro-social acts independently without even thinking about it, which is really awesome to see. You also wanna facilitate regular social interactions with each other. So this can look like small group work in the academic context or during recess time. I know um, as one of our incentive days, we had a huge dance party and I had this one little girl who I have in the class. She's super quiet, super shy. And she just wanted to go sit in the corner, didn't want to dance. And I totally watched her come out of her shell because I took her over to another student who she does not know and didn't have class with, but also same case, just a super shy girl. And they immediately like just joined together and they were best buddies. They held hands and danced the entire dance party. And it was so sweet to see. But that was a really good example of facilitating and making those connections for students so that they can have those positive interactions and learn to interact with other students, build those social skills, etc. And lastly, we want to celebrate pro-social acts, which is sometimes really hard because if you had a lot, of, a lot of behavioral issues in the class, there's a lot of students acting out. What you want to do is focus on the good. If you see um, three students that are out of their seats, but you have five students who are sitting at their desks, say, oh, so-and-so is at their desk, they're ready and open to the page we want, amazing job, gold star. Like, you wanna foster the positives more so than focusing on the negatives because then those students might look up and go, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And without you even having to say anything, they're gonna change their behavior to the pro-social action that we're looking for. So that's what we're trying to focus on and as far as modeling these actions and promoting them in the classroom first and focusing on the positive.